Alright, what's up Dragon Brood? Today we wanted to take a look at doing dragons, but different. We're gonna play the dragons in Rakdos and see if we can make this work out. And side note here, if you have bad manners, I've decided I'm just not gonna include any of those games in my videos. I'm not looking to support that. Don't want to give those people any face time. And if I randomly do include it, I'm probably just going to block your name out because, like, why give those people publicity? But anyway, let's go take a look at this deck full of dragons and Rakdos colors. Of course, don't forget, with all the cool magic stuff coming up, if you're looking to make some purchases, consider going to our sponsor over at CoolStuffInc.com. They always have cool stuff in stock, and you can save 5% of your purchase with code DRAGON at checkout. It's that easy. Okay. So getting into this list, we're going to ignore kind of like the removal and stuff we're going to be playing. But let's look at the cards that are going to make this go. So let's start with Rivers of the Claw. This is a 3-3 three, three for 3. Not the most impressive thing, but one, he does have Menace, which is hard to block. And you can tap him to make 2 mana to cast Dragons. And of course, we're playing Dragons today. Has extra text, though, that does let us play Dragons out of the graveyard, which is also really fantastic. We're going to be playing at Sushi the Blazing Sky. This card's just really good. Let's us dig deeper to find answers. Let's us play Treasures so we can actually cast multiple things. So really not much to hate about this card. We also have Mana Form Hellkite. Since we are going to have a fair amount of non-creature spells, there's a lot of times this is going to do really well for us, getting that extra body. Sometimes you can even kill something with an instant speed spell, make a blocker, and get, pick off something else. So it could be some fun stuff we can do with this. Moonvelve Regent, just a fun way to try to get extra cards. Once our hand's empty or down to one card, we go ahead and start casting things, and then every card basically has draw one or two on top of it if we play a multicolor spell. The Elder Dragon War. It's not technically a dragon, but it makes a dragon and it counts. But we can use this to sweep away all those small creatures if you're playing against mono red, mono white aggro, stuff like that. It actually works really well, and it even is two points of damage to the opponent sometimes if we really need it. Or, if we're desperate, we can just ditch cards and try to go find something. We're also going to be playing Shivan Devastator. I like this card a lot. It having haste is huge. It being able to come over the top is huge. It can pick off other planeswalkers. It can just be a big finisher if you top deck it. So like what this does, and we can still get extra mana from Rivas to use it, which is great. Or draw Rivas late and play this out of the graveyard as a hasty thing, which is also super nice. We are going to supplement this though with some planeswalkers in the form of Obnixilis. Don't necessarily have a lot of things we love sacrificing, but there's enough slow control matchups where this card's actually going to be very good for us. And of course, we're going to be playing Shieldred because, well, it's Shieldred. The card's good. What are you going to do? As long as it's in standard, we're probably going to play it. And also sticking with the dragon theme, we're going to be playing Invasion of Tarkir because why not? And because we have stuff like the Mana Form Hellkite, there'll be times we could actually kill something, make that extra creature, and then just go straight in and get rid of this all in one go which is kind of nice. So hopefully this helps us win a game or two. We're also going to try Junji. Now, Junji is a little bit of a tough one here because we can't use Junji to return other dragons in the play, but we could get something out of the opponent's graveyard or potentially just get back something like Shieldred, and that might be good enough. We just have to see. Maybe might be a little bit of a liability. I don't know, but I'm sure we'll play enough games to find out. But otherwise, that's the bulk of the list. Those are the interesting cards. If you want to see the full list, it'll be at the end of the video, because I'm sure we will make changes. But you can also download the list. Just go to our description, look for the blue arrows. It'll take you to our Moxfield link where you can see this list and all 100 plus we played throughout the season. Y'all go enjoy these games. If you like dragons, this one's for you. I'll see you on the back end of the video. Yeah, I guess we keep this, right? Like, eh? Like one of those things where it's not like crazy exciting, but good enough. Well, I would have liked to have drawn an untapped land there. Would have been great. I'm going to gamble here, though. I think it's going to be worth it to try to kill a Swift Spear or whatever else they play here. Especially tap out for like a two mana creature. Like that, for instance. I'll go ahead and take a point and kill that. Okay. Ooh, we did not find the land though. That hurts. That hurts. I was I took a gamble and it did not pay off. This is where things could start going badly. All right. This is going to hurt quite a bit. That's good because we could theoretically get hmm. <clears throat> this is tough. Cause I think they have a play with fire. It also means this is not going to be able to kill anything when the time comes. I'm going to go ahead and play this. Oh, they don't have a play with fire. Oh, I might have chose poorly. The way that was set up, I would have assumed they had it for sure. 
They didn't, though. That's good to know. All right, they had double lightning strike. Which then means if we can get a sizable dragon or not, it would at least stick. Eh, that's something, I guess. All right. See what else they got for us. Pilfer, let's kill this guy. They can take whatever they want. I mean, our hand's kind of slow right now. I mean, it's probably in their best interest to take the invasion of Tarkir, so I can't kill their creature on our turn. Hmm. Interesting. So do they have another burn spell here? No, it's just a land. Well, not particularly what I would have chosen, but we'll take this, I guess. Uh, submit zero. I mean, it's not like they don't know, I guess. <laughs> They've already seen it. And we're only at six, though. Let's be real. Like, this could still be very bad. Any burn spell, any haste creature, all of it is not good for us. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and play this to kill that off. Just put it on first chapter. There we go. All right. That's what we're looking for. Uh, let's discard this, because I don't think we need it. Actually, I could discard. No, I need that. Alright. Mm, fair enough. Go with this. And then we're going to sack that. And then I'm going to use the first one to make a devil. And then I'm going to use the other to minus, so that we can gain some life. Or plus, I mean. So that way the opponent has to lose life. There we go. Now we're at eight. We're feeling a little bit better. We're going to get a dragon next turn. But we're going to get two dragons, it looks like. Yep, and that'll do it. I'm going to keep. I'm also just realizing, I don't know if I've gone first yet today. All right. Is this going to be some domain ramp shenanigans? It looks like it is. All right. Then I guess we'll go with this. No, it's not. There's just a Thalia. Wow. Huh. Okay. Play this just to see what's up. Have a backup one anyway. Taxidermis. What are they doing over there? I mean, I'm into it. I like seeing cool different ideas. I'm just a little uh, stunned trying to figure out what their plan is. I guess I'm going to go with this. In the turn. Oh, well, I do like that card. All right. Well, that's that. Yeah, and there, if the opponent goes to pass priority... We can kill that before we go to the next phase. They don't even get to put their counters on, and then we're attacking for six. I'm probably just going to play that and attack for nine and just see what's up. I may even, I probably would even consider discarding one of them to draw a card just to get closer to something. But yeah, not really sure what the opponent's deck was there. I definitely had it read wrong from the beginning. But uh, interesting mix of things. I guess it was a hum Naya humans list with some different cards in there. Hmm. Well, this is a pretty easy mulligan. Wouldn't much to think about there. We'll keep this. And, oh boy. Um, scrap the invasion, I think. All right. Sure, we don't have anything. Don't know what they're playing, but I was willing to just not even pretend like we had a cut down. Let them do whatever they want. All right. Maybe they have a cut down. They do not. They have an Azuri. We are definitely going to kill Azuri. That is not even a question. As much as I want to play Obnixilis on that turn, Azuri is definitely the correct... Or, uh, why did I say Azuri? That's Zur. I'd like that Azuri is a whole different card. Y'all knew what I meant, though. <laughs> uh, do we waste this invasion of Tark here? Because if they're playing this, we're not going to get to kill much with that anyway.
Okay. They didn't stop that. So I'm just going to hit the opponent. Not going to attack. Because I kind of want to be able to play out Nixilis next turn if they have a Wandering Emperor. Oh, they just had a Thirst. Okay. Well, didn't know. And we kind of need two on Nixilis because those decks tend to play Ley Lines. So there's a chance we're not going to get much value otherwise. Alright, well... We set ourselves up in case they have a... Uh, make Disappear. Uh, what are they targeting with the Ley Line? Wouldn't they just want to wait until... I don't need that was strange. Alright, I'm just going to go for it. I mean, I guess they could have another one. Yeah, I feel like the opponent might have just been too quick on the trigger on their Ley Line. They might have meant to wait until I had something in play that they could remove. All right, Fateful Absence, one of them. Makes sense. I'm going to go ahead and draw a card. Excellent. Not quite enough to do this and this to get that hasty 4-4. Four, four. So we're going to do this. Which allows us to attack. Put them at 8. We will plus... Play a dude. Feels good. Oh, and a shielded. All right. Now they will get to give that life link, and then we have to play this whole song and dance. So that's unfortunate. But I'm just gonna go to twelve. Yep, we're just gonna have to find a removal card. That's kind of our only option. Has Death Touch Life Link Hexproof? So we would be able to block it with Shield Rig next turn. Hmm. Yeah, I guess we block. Well, that didn't help, unfortunately. I was hoping there would have been a little more there. Also, thanks Arena for tapping all my black mana. So I can't even pretend like I have something else. Alright. Oh, they had to touch the spirit realm. Alright, GG's. They got that one. Alright, I guess we keep it. This could be a bad deck to keep this hand against. Oh, or not. There's something we can actually kill. I think we'll do it with this, because I have a feeling instant speed removals are definitely going to be better the rest of the way. Alright, gain a life, play another one. We're going to kill that one too. Since we're going to be tapping out, we'll just play that and go after this. If they have another one, we can't do nothing about it. <laughs> like, they're obviously going to have a way to protect it. Okay, I say that, and then we drew this. So, we go for the invasion, target the drake. They, well, they'll target the drake as well. And then we'll try to target it with a go for the throat. All right. They have more creatures? Well, uh, they found more. All right, well, it is what it is. <laughs> they just have it, they have it. Let's see if maybe we'll get lucky and they try to target it with something. They didn't, which is probably really, really bad for us. Unless they somehow tap three or four mana here. I don't think we have a real shot at this. Uh, go for the throat resolving. I guess they could try to play this thing out of the yard. 
All right, we'll try knowing damn well they can protect it, but that's all their deck is ultimately. All right. Oh, they're just returning it to their hand. Okay. That was a little better than expected. Let's see if we can get our own dragons here over a couple of turns. Alright, Drake. They could give it double strike to fight our Hellkite if they wanted to. Or other bonuses. Yep. Assume that was coming. Okay. This is interesting. So let's do this. So we get an extra 2-2. Two -two. This also counts as a dragon, because it's a dragon illusion. But we will get rid of this one. Making us a dragon that gives us some triggers here. And then we'll send this here, this at the opponent, this also here. The two triggers, I'll send one here and one here because I'm pretty sure, because if they have a way to protect it, these are both on the stack and that would be above it, so it wouldn't really matter. Oh, it died anyway. They didn't have a way to save it. Nice. Oh, man. That was value I was not anticipating. Hopefully they don't have a sweeper here. Because if so, that's game. We have so much damage in just dragons. Though also, we would be able to play the underdog out of the graveyard. And then just get another dragon. So, yeah, they're just going for cards here. That's fine. I mean, you got to deal with these Thunder Maws. I mean, you got it. We just attack? All right. Here goes three dragons. I mean, this is a bunch of triggers, so two are going to go there. We'll send the rest here. I mean, that's a lot. It's a whole lot to deal with. Sure. You got it. You can block and kill a dragon. All right. They go all the way down to one. Uh, I guess we just end the turn. Yeah, I'm not sure what else they would do there. In all reality, with all the triggers I had, I didn't even have to target their creature at all. Even with them having an extra couple of cards in hand, I could have just sent whatever that was. I had two, so it's two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve. I could have just sent that all at their face. Then if they bounce or kill something, they're still going to be at three or less life, I would imagine. So, yeah, probably was better to do that anyway. Because if they're going to do anything, they're just going to block and trade to kill one of these regardless. If they could even, as it turns out save their creature by giving it indestructible. So, yeah, a little bit of a mistake, but it ultimately didn't matter. We'd exhausted so many cards from the opponent. I mean, that was that was a pretty lucky game in the sense that we drew so many removal cards that actually helped us deal with all this. But, yeah, there was several situations and different types of draws where if they would have had a different untapped land early or something, that game could have potentially went a very different direction. Oh, man. All right. We'll keep this on the draw, but three tap lands is a little bit tough. Okay, that helps a whole lot. Because now we can kill that. Then we can try to play a Harvester next turn. I mean, you know it's the blue deck. There's going to be a lot of things to counter. All right.
Waiting hope, sure, makes sense. It's gonna get make disappeared, I'm pretty sure. Makes sense. Pass the turn. All right, we take two. I'm actually gonna crack this and... I feel like I'm gonna get rid of this. Uh, I was half hoping just to find a dragon for this invasion, but this will have to do, I guess. Now uh, let's off that. Alright, do have to worry about the fact that something like a Haughty Jin could show up here. And that would be a whole lot of not good for us. But let's start here. Obviously, we'd rather them counter that than like Shieldred. So, this is one of those situations where. Even though you are playing against counter spells and they're trying to stop you from doing something, you technically are you you get to decide what they get to counter, right? Like you get to pose the question. This says they don't have counters and now they're looking for something. So that's good. All right, try to attack, see if there's a fading hope. Looks like there is. All right. They get to scry. They left something on top. I'm assuming another counter. Because they didn't do much of anything there. Let's go ahead and play this. Obviously get countered. Goes to the graveyard. Yep. Funny thing is, I'm actually not even mad if they get lands right now. Alright, let's see. Does that protect a creature? Whatever that last thing is. Fading hope. Sure. Alright. So now their hand is exposed. Effectively. I'm going to go ahead and play one of these. Oops. Just for two. And start in on this. They're obviously going to replay Ledger Shredder here. Alright. We're going to go here. What counter is that? If it is even a counter at all. Let's make this appear. Okay, sure. No attack. Sooner or later, they're going to have to hit a land. Opponent says GG. All right. They just ran out of gas. But yeah, look at this. This is why I don't like these decks, right? Like, look at what the opponent did. They had they bounced a thing. They countered a thing. They countered one, two, three, four, five different things. They bounced two of our things, one of their own, to protect it. Dug for cards twice, and still, ultimately, lost the game with us still having a lot of backup. Now, that could have went a different direction, of course. I could have drawn extra lands or whatever, but I just... It just doesn't feel like there's enough there to go this route. It, at least playing the version with the Haughty Jins and, and the Serpents or whatever, you at least have something big to try to close the clock with. The problem here is that all they have is Ledger Shredder, right? If they'd have had a Haughty Jin... That would have been, what, like a six power or something? Eight power? So, like, effectively two or three attacks would have ended the game there. So there's definitely a big difference. Now, that's not to say they don't have them in their deck as well. We just may not have seen them. 
But yeah, this worked out pretty well for us, all things considered. All right, we're going to keep... This is the all-creature, no-removal hand. But, because we have three things that cost two, I mean, I guess it's viable. All right, one of the few things we'll probably get to kill with this. All right, we found a third land, so that's kind of nice. I'm going to go with this. Just in case there's removal or something. We don't have many other removal cards in hand, so I'd like to hold on to the Harvester if possible. And maybe use it later. Don't know that we'll get to, but, you know, maybe. Uh, yeah, let's go ahead and play this. There's a chance they just use Harvester and kill it, but... Such is life. Yep. And then Shieldred. Makes sense. That was right on time, so we'll go with this. Now, once the Atsushi dies, I think we have to choose the treasure so that we could play Shieldred to hopefully kill their Shieldred. That was probably the best thing. Oh, no, but they get to choose, though. Now that they have Liliana, that kind of sucks. I think we still got to take the treasure, though. All right. Well, it wouldn't have mattered anyway. They have another creature to sacrifice now. All right. Do we get anything good here? That is not what we would call good at all. Okay. So what are our choices? We have two, four, six, eight mana. We could play underdog. That's probably bad. We could play shieldred harvester. Alright, I guess that's what we do. Don't love it, but kind of just is what it is. Yep. Okay. I mean, if we discard, we're discarding an underdog, so it's not like the worst thing. Kind of got to hope that that's just a blank, like some land or something from the opponent. It doesn't look like it is. Well, they're going to discard before playing something. All right. Don't so they also had an underdog. Sure. Why not? Yeah, we'll just block it. Go to eight. We go to six. We need to draw a removal card here or we're just dead skis. Got to be able to kill Shieldred here, and we are not going to be able to. Alright, well, all I can do is crack this. We know the risk. We're going to go to four. Yep, that's not going to do it. Uh, I mean, we can make a four-four. But ultimately, we just die in two turns anyway. I'll just go to the last level. Man, really just drew a cut down this game. That, that's pretty tough. Pretty tough. Um, Yeah, I guess that's all we can do. Because otherwise we're going to lose a creature anyway. It's no fun when they I mean, if they have a removal card, we're dead. Because then we can't effectively block Shieldred. Yep. That's probably going to end up being all she wrote. Alright, that's it. Okay, we'll keep it. Mm -mm -mm -mm. Did not want <laughs> second Junji. Uh, poor cut down for the Harvester. All right, this hand is going to struggle, unless the opponent gives us plenty of things to kill. This is going to be kind of sad. Let's just pass. During their end step, we may be scrapping a Junji. Well, we are going to scrap a Junji anyway. Sure. And 
Okay, found another lamb. That's nice. Nah. I'm going to have to discard anyway. I think I want to do this. Discard the Genji. Hold on to the go for the throat for possible shielded. I think. So let's just reveal this. And I'll discard the Junji. Aha, there wasn't even a shield rig. Dang it. Made the play and it wasn't even there. Alright. I mean, obviously, this is just going to die to go for the throat at this point. Unless they just drew their... Uh... Oh, nope. They didn't have it. Wow. Okay. This is interesting. Oh, well, maybe it still dies. It does not. Oh. Now there's some things to think about. So we could kill one of these, making a 2 2. Discard this dragon. Get in there, get the. I think that's what we do. Uh, resolve. We'll discard this. Oh, they had a cut down for that. Hmm, how bad do I want this other dragon? All right, I'm going to go for it. Against this matchup, I should probably be keeping Obnixilis, but whatevs, here we go. Okay, we're kind of all in on this plan now. I mean, they may just be waiting to get to Breach, too. That's going to be real harsh. Gix's command. Makes sense. Alright. Well, this is all we can do. Oh, and they're going to get to exile two things, because it's nighttime now with both of them. Actually, four things. Ugh, oh, this is bad. I may die to my own hubris, not holding on to that, uh... Okay, okay. This isn't the worst. That would be three, six... What do you have in your yard? And seven. Alright. One, two, three, four. Gotta be all at the opponent, because I don't have cards in hand. All right, can we do it? Flesh Gorger, that's it. We're good. That's ball game. Woo! Didn't think we were gonna get there for a second. That was looking real rough. Still think I might have misplayed somewhere in the middle there, but I'll take it. Oh, man. That was a good one. All right. Let's keep it. Do, 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 do. Nahiri sleeves. And they actually are playing red cards. I was just about to laugh. I see a lot of times where people are playing a certain type of sleeve or card back or whatever. And they're playing a totally different color deck, which I always find amusing. Oh, never mind. It is red-white, but this is... Just the reanimator shenanigans. Alright. Well, what are we trying to do here? Trying to think how this actually goes in a way that benefits us. We attack. I guess we just play another one of these. In the turn. Yep. I don't have a way to destroy anything, so I'm sure they're just going to get that back next turn, and then that's probably ball game. 
I'm just trying to think if there's anything we could do here. I probably need to try to find... Um... Man, I don't even know if gopher throat's any good here, really. I'm gonna... Actually, you know what? I'm gonna get rid of cut down. There is a world where two points could still matter. Or more. That doesn't help, though. Okay, we did we did find the Obnix list. That's pretty big, actually. Alright, so attack the opponent here. Go ahead and Obnix list. Scrap one of these. Plus... I mean, obviously, they're going to get to put some in the yard. They can animate if they have it, but, like, they didn't immediately discard, so that's good for us. That means they don't have a lot of quality targets. Nothing we have to worry about getting haste or whatever here. Opponent's at nine. Wandering Emperor, sure. That does give them more life, unfortunately. Okay. I want to get rid of this just to try to dig us to more answers here, I think. Because that's not doing anything for us. Alright, neither is that, really. Okay. Make sure the Wandering Emperor's out of the way. We'll plus these. <laughs> Your plus this. Is my entertainment. In the turn. Plead for mercy. What they got? Nahiri lets you get something in the graveyard and it gains haste. Ugh. Is that just equipment though, right? Yeah. So they're just going to draw and discard here. Okay, that's fair. Show me what you're made of. Interesting. I'm trying to figure out what Nahiri does for that list, actually. Just draw and discard, I guess. I guess it's a, it still puts stuff in the yard. That's probably reasonable enough. Don't mind that. So we'll go with this. See if they're holding on to a removal card. I guess I could have done this first to see if they discard their hand and then don't let them kill Shieldred. Uh, opponent could top deck something and this is bad, so I'm just going to pass here. Because if they have something like a Sunfall, I'd rather not lose this and then we can just attack for three. Uh, draw and discard. That's two more points. That's good for us. Feels pretty good now. Yep, that's going to do it. Man, those Omnixilis were very timely in this fight. Ooh, good stuff. Ooh, we're going to mulligan this. Oh, that's not much better. I'm going to keep this. I'm going to scrap. Uh, yeah, all right. Man, that's tough. Kind of going to be banking on the first rib is dying. Second one lives, and then we play dragon plus something, I guess. Not a great plan, but it's, it's kind of my only serviceable thing I got going. I wouldn't mind finding a spell here to kill some things, because that'd be real nice. All right, let's go. Hmm. Hmm. Go here. No attacks. I, mean, I could try to trade for a contaminator, but well, I'm not gonna get to trade at all now. That seems real bad. Yep. You got it. Come on, deck. We need some removal real bad. 
that is not going to do it. All right, GG's. No removal against that deck, we die. All right, we're keeping. Do, 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 do. All right, let's run this one out first. Oh, they didn't have a removal card, huh? Liliana? Okay, that's the only thing that makes sense at that point, right? This is going on. And for once it's not my fault. Sure, you got it. <laughs> Off you go. Since we're not doing much anything else here. Pass the turn. You got it. Pass. They didn't use Liliana. Hmm. So they like everything in their hand. Do we just take two points here to get rid of this? Because they obviously don't have other cheap things. We kill this during their upkeep. We get to attack Liliana. Then we don't get to do much of anything else. Unless we draw like a two mana thing. But yeah, I'm willing to do that. Okay, that's not so bad, I guess. Like a little bit of a roundabout way to approach things, but here we are. I'll be back with friends. I was thinking they might have like Gix's command in hand or something, but that goes after things that are power two or less, so that's not bad. Pilfer costing us our shielded sucks. Yep. That's not great. But that's okay. We do actually still get to play this other Shieldred if we want. But I don't think I want, to be honest. I don't want to attack with these. And play this guy. And the turn. So I can shave our Shieldred in case they do find something like that. And we can make them get rid of it. That's cute, but not necessary. And then get in there with our pile of duders. All right. Now that we have Underdog and Invasion of Tarkir, we're probably good here. I'm going to get rid of this. Just for value. Not that those did anything, but, you know. GG's. Okay, so there was a little bit of a thing here that I knew could have been an issue, and that was Junji being a potential liability. And it wasn't great. We already knew we had a lot of dragons, so realistically, we're only going to be getting back, like, Harvester, Rivers, or uh, Shieldreds, which is fine in and of itself, but the reality is... We might be better off just playing something like Liliana. Just because this is going to be kind of slow against Mono Red. And it's not great against the slower control decks, right? So we'd rather have something just like making them discard or make them sacrifice the thing. So I think if we change the Junjis to Liliana's, that's probably better. And it makes the deck, the cost of stuff, just a little bit cheaper, which is nice. And it's another thing that works with our Moondell Regent, which is pretty sweet. Or I mean our Maniform Hellkite, sorry, that can make us the extra token. Still works with all of our other cards, so I don't think this is an overall bad thing. And I think, really, if we're worried about the opponents that are playing so many Sunfalls and Farewells or whatever, having more Planeswalkers is just going to be the way to go there. So giving us five Planeswalkers along with all of our other removal, I do think we could probably cut a Go for the Throat at that point, because we just added two more removal to the deck, because now it leaves us Cut Downs, Go for the Throat set six, Invasion of Tarkir takes us to nine, Two Lilianas is six or is uh, eleven, and then we have Blood Thirst, uh, Blood Tithe Harvesters, which takes us to fifteen. Plus we have the Shieldred, right? So that's a lot of removal. I don't think we necessarily need all of it. I would be okay cutting a Go for the Throat for some other card, and I'll probably add that once I figure out what it is in the final deck list you get to download. But for now, we have two Cut Down, four Go for the Throat, three Tenacious Underdog, three Invasion of Tarkir. Four Blood Tithe Harvester, two Liliana of the Veil, two Obnixilis, three Rivers of the Claw, 
three Shieldred, the Apocalypse, two Etsushi, the Blazing Sky, one Maniform Hellkite, one Moonvale Regent, two the Elder Dragon War, one Shieldred, two Shivan Devastator. And then we have five Swamp, a Takanuma, four Mountain, one Sakinzen, four Black Cleave Cliffs, four Haunted Ridge, four Sulphur Springs, two Zia Taurus Proving Ground. So yeah, I think this deck still has a shot, and I do think adding those Lilianas makes a difference. I think I would like to have maybe still one more dragon so we can stay on the dragon theme, because I think we have two Etsushi, a Maniform Hellkite, uh, the Moonvale Regents. We do have the Elder Dragon War, which has dragons, and we have two of the uh, Haste Dragons. So, I mean, I guess that's a fair amount. We can also add one more there. But overall, not bad. Actually plays pretty well, holds up the way you want. Has enough removal to help you through those creature decks. Now, we did lose one, I think, because we just saw no removal through, like, four turns. And that's going to happen. If it does, not a lot you can do about it. But overall, the deck actually played pretty well. I don't have a lot of complaints about it. And you will win some games, sometimes just on the back of Planeswalkers. Sometimes because you just have 4-4 four, four Flyers. So, like, I like the fact that it can have different angles of attack, which is very good. And now for today's card spotlight, we're going to talk about Ebon Death, Draco Lich. I bring this card up because while it was in Standard... It didn't really do much, and trust me, I tried three or four times. It just didn't work out, it was a bit too slow, and we really didn't have a good like aristocrats type deck for it to fit in where you're like sacrificing and then you can return the dragon and take advantage of all that. But the reality is, in Commander, that's not so much the case. There's a lot of decks that actually want something like this. You know, a big five power or bigger power creature coming into play, sacrificing something every turn, other things dying that allow you to come this to come back into play, something that triggers when you just play creatures every turn. So lots of interesting decks that can use a card like this, and that actually has kept this from going into the bulk bin. This card still goes for three or four dollars, so it is worth a little bit more than you probably thought, and it's actually pretty useful. So if you have any decks that need something like that, this is one that's worth considering. And I have to say, if dragons aren't your thing and you're looking for other ways to play Rakdos, we have this really cool deck that took advantage of Body Dropper doing a lot of cool sacrifice stuff. You might want to check that one out. Well, that's all I have you for now. We'll see you next time.